Hey everybody, welcome to Movie Time. I am your host, Sean. Let's get to the news, guys. Over the holiday weekend, American Sniper broke some box office records for the month of January. Over the holiday weekend, it took in over $105 million. I haven't been able to see this movie. I am really interested in seeing this movie. I want to see what Clint Eastwood's take on this book is, this uh, quote-unquote autobiography. But at the same time, there's also been a lot of controversy surrounding this movie and the possible glorification of a sniper. Now I'm not going to put where I stand on this matter, but I do think that everybody should go out there and and look at it from both sides of the story and not just take anyone's word for it without trying to understand the other side. It's a, it's a lot of stuff going on uh, and, and it's causing a lot of people to really get mad at each other from what I've read so far. Some of the main people that have uh, started uh, I guess you could say uh, conversations about this movie are Seth Rogen and Michael Moore. Uh, Michael Moore is a documentary filmmaker, Bowling for Co Columbine, uh, Fahrenheit 9-11, and so on. And Seth Rogen, you guys know him from his hit, The Green Hornet. Oh, we don't. Um, from The World's End, Pineapple Express, The Interview, and all those other good movies. So. They had some things to say, and uh, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of controversy going on around this stuff. A lot of people getting really up in arms. So, so I am just gonna stay off that topic, but I am uh, really interested in this movie still. It has been announced this week that Simon Pegg, uh, he plays Scotty in the Star Trek series, will be co-writing Star Trek 3. This is good news in my perspective. Scott, uh, Scotty, I was about to call him Scotty. Simon Pegg is a very, uh, big nerd. That's the easiest way to say it. He has uh, proven himself as a writing talent and with other screen uh, plays before. He helped write on a lot of other comedy movies um, so I mean he does have some credibility here. He helped on Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, The World's End, Paul, Run Fat Boy Run. I, that one's a really good one. You guys should go watch that one. That one's really good. Hank Azaria's in there. He does a great job as well. I am not worried about this at all. Star Trek 3 has had a lot of ups and downs over this past year. Losing its director Robert Orsi and uh, now they have Justin Lin directing. Um, and now you have Simon Pegg co-writing. But I think that they're going to be able to pull this through. J.J. Abrams is still an executive producer on this film. I am not that worried about this film, even with all of this movement going on around it. One of the best genres in films this day and age is the video game movie genre. I love the video game movie genre. It just it hits me in all the right places. It strikes a chord in my heart. That was sarcasm, guys. But anyway, the Resident Evil series has been able to stand and uh, stand the test of time, I guess you could say, because it's been around for over 10 years now. And as of last year, I think it was in August, I spoke about it in one of my previous videos, one of my previous episodes of Movie Time, is that Mila Jovovich and her husband became pregnant, became with child. She was with child, and they had to push off the filming of the final installment of the Resident Evil series, Resident Evil The Final Chapter. This week, Mila Jovovich has gone on her Facebook and said that she's very happy with where she's at and she hasn't put on a lot of weight as she did with her other child, her first child, which was about 75 pounds. And so she's getting ready to be start filming in August of this year. So that's pretty good news for you fans out there of the uh, Resident Evil series. To be honest with you guys, I am completely lost in the series of what's going on and everything of that nature I, I think um, even if I were to go back and watch every single one in order I wouldn't get back in, in the perspective of where they are the only thing that I could place is that fact that on the last one is kind of where they left off at the end when she was on the boat and it's gonna kind of you can see that it's coming together to finish off but I mean all the other movies I think was there five or six movies now and I mean you really can't even like connect them at, there's like little tidbits where you can connect them but really I am totally lost with all the major story plot points and things of that nature with this series I'm excited to watch it one time and uh, see if it if it is all that great with action or um, if they use great camera uh, functionality uh, technology like they did with the phantom cameras from James Cameron in I think it was one or two movies ago. So they're going to start filming in August that is coming from the horse's mouth Mila Jovovich on her very own Facebook. Are you guys excited for Resident Evil The Final Chapter? I'm excited that's the final chapter. 
And in a recent interview, the fight choreographer for the upcoming movie Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, Guillermo Grispo, really, uh, released some information about the upcoming movie and where it stands in the world of fight choreography compared to previous Batman movies. Uh, he stated, There's a thought that Batman has no chance, that the Superman will squash him like a bug. But when you see the movie and how it all comes out, there's a very intelligent explanation as to why they would have a first-hand confrontation, though it seems to be totally to Batman's disadvantage. Now Batman is going to fight the way I've always dreamed seeing him fight. He's a character so prepared in martial arts that you can do a lot of things with him, but filmmakers usually don't go all the way with him. Even in the last Nolan movies, the action scenes aren't very good from a technical martial arts point of view to things like choreography, filming, bad camera movements. Don't get me wrong, Nolan is great. My hat's off to him. But I think he did not pay too much attention to the fights. Those are the kind of details that Zack, being so physical himself, loves preparing. I think there's going to be a big difference when you see these Batman fights in comparison to the previous one. Wow, this dude is just throwing down the gauntlet. And uh, at the same time, I wonder, is this really that smart? I don't think... I, I like his comments. I really do. I think he's proud of what's going to happen in the upcoming movie. And I like that confidence. At the same time, I think he kind of also, you know, slipped up a little bit by throwing Nolan under the bus. And Nolan is actually still an executive producer on this film coming out. So, even then though, I do like his comments and I am still very, very excited for the upcoming Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. Brian Singer, you guys know him as one of the directors, the main dude behind the X-Men franchise and series. He lets out a lot of information, like he trickles it out through his own Twitter. He did that again this week, announcing the casting of Storm, Jean Grey, and Cyclops for the upcoming X-Men Apocalypse. Ty Sheridan will be playing Cyclops, Sophie Turner will be playing Jean Grey, and Alexandra Ship will be playing Storm. Now in all honesty, don't hate me for this, do not send me death threats or anything. I haven't watched uh, Game of Thrones, so I don't know uh, one of the actors from that, and I don't know the other two from any of their previous work either. So uh, for me, this is big news that they have been announced, the fact that they are going to be in the film and they're going to be younger characters. I like that. I like that they're doing this. I like that he's he's said this. He's laid it out there. But at the same time, I don't know whether to be happy or excited or, or just lukewarm about these actual casting announcements. Let me know what you guys think down below. Are you guys excited about these announcements of, play, of the actors playing Cyclops, Storm, and Jean Grey? And to stick with the last bit of comic book movie news, Star-Lord and Captain America, Chris Pratt and Chris Evans have got into a Twitter war. This is over the Super Bowl. They have made a bet, because uh, Chris Evans is a Patriots fan, Chris Pratt is a Seahawks, Seahawks fan. They have made a bet that if whichever team wins, the other has to go to one of the hospitals that the other chooses from their neck of the woods, from their area of the country. This is great. I love this publicity. I hope that it was really natural because that's that makes it even better. I have a feeling that regardless of who wins, I think they're both going to go to each each other's hospitals. I think both of them are going to do what they they do. They're going to do a stand-up job and they're going to they're going to be that inspiration to these kids. I'm very happy about this whole Twitter war. It's one of the good types of wars that we want more of in this world. All right, guys, no no trailers this week. No trailers this week. Nothing really caught my attention. So, I want to move straight on into what's in theaters this week. In theaters this week, you have the critically acclaimed, at least the actress's performance is critically acclaimed, Cake. It is starring Jennifer Aniston. Uh, I heard a lot of good things about this film and a lot of good things about her performance in there. A lot of people saying that she was kind of snubbed for some of the awards this year. So there is that movie coming out. You also have Mordecai. Uh, I am not a Johnny Depp fan, really at all. Uh, and I don't know if this one's going to be good or not. I, it, the trailer looks okay. There's a lot of name actors in there, but I do not know. And the third movie in theaters this week is The Boy Next Door. I am interested in this film for one reason and one reason only. Jennifer Lopez's sex scene. Don't tell my mom I said that, okay? And that is what is in theaters this week, guys. All right, guys, so that's it for this week's episode of Movie Time. Remember to click the like, share, subscribe buttons down below. Leave your comments, questions, suggestions in the comment section. Let's have a great conversation this week. We'll see you next time.